Okay, we have here an interesting integral from the MIT Integration B 2025 quarterfinals round three problem two. We have the integral of x over the cube root of x cubed minus 3x minus 2 dx. Okay, I thought this was surprisingly kind of tricky. I mean, I guess maybe not that surprising because we're not that used to dealing with a cube root in the integral unless it's something really simple. So I think the starting point, one thing we can do pretty quick though is factor this. The good thing is you'll notice that minus one is gonna be a factor. You just plug in minus one. And so that's gonna give us a starting point of writing it. If minus one's a factor, we can factor it like x plus one, and then the rest of it's gonna be x squared minus x minus two. But then this can be factored here as x plus one times x minus two. And combining it with this, what we have is x plus one squared. So with that, let's just take this and throw it back into the integral, actually inside the radical. And then, I mean, if we think about it like one third power, and then we can distribute in the power. So how it's gonna look is we'll have our x up here, and now distributing in the power, the first part here becomes x plus one to the two thirds, and this is gonna be x minus two to the one third. And then from here, what I was thinking we could do is kind of force some cancellation. I don't know, you know, it's kind of like partial fractions, but I don't know, but you know, you don't usually do partial fractions when you got exponents like this. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you could do, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to look at it like that, but I just kind of, this is how I did it to try to force the cancellation. I create, I force an X plus one to happen, and then I force an X minus two to happen. And now to make this work, I think most of the time when I have these problems, I like to subtract them, because then it'll cancel out the x's. The only thing is we don't want that here because we want to keep an x. So I definitely need to add. And so we'll add these two terms so that we'd have two fractions and we get the cancellation. We just need to make sure this is going to work. When we do it, we've got no constant here, right? So if we add them right now, we get a minus one. So if I want the constants to cancel out, what if I multiply in a two right here? Then when you distribute that out, you get two X plus two plus X minus two. Now the constants cancel, but this whole thing is three X. So all I need to do to make this work, so we get back just to an X, is what if I multiply by one third out front, then one third times three X, we just get our X. We haven't changed it, but now we have something we can split up into two fractions. So what's gonna happen now? I'll distribute the one third back in. So like the first piece is gonna be two thirds. We have our X plus one over this denominator. And then for the next piece, I'm gonna keep it all in one integral, distribute in the one third. So we'll have one third in front, X minus two over the same denominator again. Now at the beginning, I think I said cancellation when technically that's not true because we can't fully cancel because you know, X plus one, we have a different exponent, so it's not gonna quite work, but we can simplify. We can think of this as X plus one to the one power, X minus two to the one power. And then if we divide this in here with this here, well then this will go away and we're left with X plus one to the one third. Kind of nice because it matches that right there. And then same kind of thing over here, we divide this one into this one, we get a two thirds power on this and this guy goes away. So when I did it the first time around, I kind of turned this into one fraction with the same exponent. I found it actually to be a little more awkward that way. Instead, what I'm gonna do is bring it up into the numerator and write it that. So let me just rewrite it, just turning this into a negative exponent, bringing everything into the numerator. And then writing it this way, it's starting to look kind of promising because you, know, you have this nice thing when you take, you start looking at derivatives, if you take the derivative of something with a one third power, you're gonna get back minus two thirds. And here we have the same base. So I think this is gonna be our starting point right here of finding what the derivatives look like. Let me make a little space. So I'll just do it up here to save myself from rewriting this, but let's take this thing right here and we'll call this a G. So we have G equals X plus one to the one third. And then we'll take a derivative, find the G prime, First, it's, it's really just power rule because the chain rule is not gonna give anything. The inner derivative is just one. So do that, power rule, x plus one, and then we get minus two thirds. So what happened is 
if we combine this thing with this thing, that's gonna be our G prime. And then what we've got left to think about is this piece right here. Let's call this one an F. So we'll say F is gonna be equal to X minus two to the two thirds. Take a derivative on it. Again, power rule, chain rule is gonna yield just a one. So we get this. The exponent subtracting one becomes a minus one third, but that is exactly what we have here. If we just include the constant, this is our F prime. So what we have here is the product rule. If you look at the product rule, writing it as FG, when we take that derivative, we get F prime G plus FG prime, exactly what we have here, same format. This thing's within an integral. Okay, so we've got the product rule within an integral in this form. When you do that, it's gonna reverse the derivative and the solution is gonna be in the form. And so our solution is just gonna be F times G plus C. So really all that's left is we just need to grab our F and G and put that into a solution. One thing I can do is we can bring the cube root back into it. So like for the solution on this, we can write it, I'll write it all under a big cube root. This here will just become X plus one. This over here will be X minus two all squared, add a plus C and that's it. Initially, I wanted to multiply it back together to get it to look like this, but actually, if you remember, the factoring was different. In the original problem, it was x plus one squared, x minus two. So it's not quite that, it's a slight, we just reversed the exponent on these pieces here. So I thought this was a pretty tricky variation on the product rule. You definitely, like, I definitely didn't see it coming from the way it looked there, right? You don't see anything product rule in the original problem. So that part's kind of interesting. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.